Well, a major supermarket in the UK now sells insects. It's part of a push to remove the stigma around eating creepy crawlies. Katie Gregory has been finding out if it's working. Lots and lots of little worms. At this edible insect farm in London, they know all about the benefits of eating worms and crickets. It began as a school project for their son four years ago, but it's grown into a successful business for husband and wife team Tom and Tiziana Mohan. There's been a lot of interest, growing interest, um, obviously for environmental reasons people are becoming more aware of that. The footprint of the insects is very low compared with other sources of similar sorts of protein and in fact uh, from a nutritional point of view, there are a lot of benefits of insects too because they do contain lots of protein. Breeding crickets, mealworms and superworms, the larvae of a certain type of beetle, can produce around 50 kilograms of insects every six to eight weeks. A kilo for the mealworms runs about $20 and $7 for a tub of 30 crickets. Specialist food chain Planet Organic has been stocking these packs of Jiminy's edible insects at its stores across London for a while. Insect is going to be a part of our diet, uh, daily diet. We think that it's going to take lots of time. We still have to educate people to eat insects. Um, one of the solutions is to offer a large uh, range of products with insects, uh, from the whole dehydrated insect for the snack to the insect pastas, the energy bars. And now, major UK supermarket chain Sainsbury's has started selling an edible insect product in 250 stores. Their own research found one in seven people predict eating insects will become mainstream in the next 10 years or even sooner. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organisation, at least 2 billion people eat insects globally, but the UK has yet to develop a taste for them. And while it's claimed 10% of the population in this country has tried edible insects, there is still a long way to go to convince them that these are an alternative food source to meat or fish. To save the planet is a big topic, so I guess, yeah, it's future. Uh, would you try some right now? Yeah, sure. Okay. Why not? We found some keen customers at Planet Organic willing to try some crunchy grasshoppers. It's all right. Do you think you're both willing to, to try some of these today? Some some of the uh, yeah, Greek sure. Greek spices flavor? Would you yes. give them a go? Mm. Mm. I see like fried potatoes or something. Mm. <laughs> And with concerns about over-farming and food sustainability increasing globally, these small and crunchy critters could be the next reliable food source for families around the world. Katie Gregory, TRT World London. Well, for more on this, let's go to Aaron Dossi, who's in Midwest City in the US state of Oklahoma. He's the founder and president of All Things Bugs, a company that develops sustainable, eco-friendly technologies from insects to improve food security and health. Welcome to Money Talks. Firstly, tell us, why did you decide to get into the business of bugs? Well, I've, I've always been interested in insects, and uh, uh, I went to a couple of conferences in 2010, 2011, and I started to see this topic of insects as a, a protein source, and I'm a biochemist. And, and that, so it just it just seemed to make a lot of sense. Uh, so I just did some research and uh, I actually applied for a research grant uh, in the, uh, for the, from the Gates Foundation and, and received the funding. So I started doing research on processing insects initially. Mm, interesting. Now, we heard in that report that uh, a lot of people are supporting this move for edible insects because it uh, relieves the pressure on the environment. Explain to us, how does that happen? So insects are efficient in a lot of ways. Their, their biochemistry and their biology um, allow them to be, uh, they, they use very little water because their bodies are designed not to dry out. Um, they don't use as much feed. You get a lot more body mass and protein for the amount of feed input because they're partly because they don't use, uh, generate their own body heat. So they're not using calories for that. And, and probably a lot of reasons we don't quite understand yet, but they they require very small amounts of water and feed um, input to get a certain amount of edible uh, protein out of them. Interesting. And we also heard in, this, in that story that a major British supermarket chain, Sainsbury's, is really uh, betting big on edible insects. They're stocking them in hundreds of their supermarkets across the country. Is there really a growing appetite for insects, uh, not only in the UK, but I, I guess where you are in the US as well? 
There is, there is. I think the more people learn about the, the benefits, the quality of protein you get and nutrition you get out of uh, farm-raised insects, um, the lower ecological footprints, um, and just the, the wide variety of food products you can make with them. Um, I think it, it intrigues a lot of people and people just a little bit of education can go a long way in getting people to, to try either an insect or I think the future is really just processed food products like a pasta or a bar or an alternative meat with insects as an ingredient. Mm. As we know, Asian cultures have been consuming in insects for hundreds of years, really. So why are we only starting to see it uh, develop in Western societies now? I'm not really sure, other than uh, maybe from you know Europe and, and, uh, and, and insects haven't been part of our uh, cultural cuisine for for a very long time. Whereas, as you say, it's uh, it's it's the uh, Asians eat lots of lots of insects now, so that's that's continued in, in their culture for a long time. And I think we, it's just maybe how our how our food is is developed. Um, and, and there's some interesting articles out there. I won't uh, go into because I'm not an expert on anthropology, but, mm. uh, but I think there's probably a lot of different reasons. Um, maybe the temperate climates that yes. uh, Western cultures have come through and things like that. Okay, Aaron Dossi, we will have to leave it there. But thank you again for joining us from Oklahoma.